Hello. 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 Sir, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Good. How's the weather there for today? University. Oh, it was raining all day long. Uh, it was cold. Bad weather. <laughs> it's raining here this morning too. Mm. I hate rain on Sundays. It's not a cool. Not a cool no, it's not cool. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's always, uh, unfortunately, we get more rain on our days off work than we do on the days we're working. Yeah. All right. We'll go ahead and start with in, uh, introductions. Get everybody introduced to get to know our, our classmates, and then we'll get started with our discussion class today. And Yana, will you please introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Sorry. Hi, uh, Yana. Can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? I think the handout is still charging for her. Ah, okay. All right, we'll come back to her. Oh, uh, Wanderlei, can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from, please? Yes, uh, I'm from Brazil. My name is Wanderlei. I'm from Brazil. All right, Wanderlei, thank you, and welcome to our class. Thank you. Thomas, can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Thomas? Thomas. Okay. All right, maybe he stepped away for a minute. Miguel, can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Okay. okay. Hello, everyone. I'm Miguel. I'm from Colombia. Blacks learn a lot in this class. All right. Great. Welcome to the class, Miguel. Thank you. Liliana. Welcome to the class. Can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Uh, thank you, Gary. I'm Liliana from Colombia, too, and um, happy to be here. All right. Welcome to our class. Thank you. Julio, can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Hello, everyone. I'm Julio from Montevideo, Uruguay, in South America. All right. Welcome to our class. Jao, can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Hey, hey there. I'm Jao, and I'm from Brazil. All right. Can you can you pronounce your name for me again? Jao. 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 All right. Thank you. Jerry, can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Hi, you are uh, from. I, I am from Colombia, too. Uh, I was born here. Uh, I want to. I mean. All right, welcome, welcome to our class. Thomas, can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? 
Alright, maybe no audio. Okay, y Yana, can you introduce yourself and tell us where you're from? Yeah, so hello class, hello Gary, I'm from Brazil. I live in Recife. Alright, welcome to our class. Thank you. Alright, our class today is a discussion class, and I usually try to pick a topic that applies to most parts of the world so that everybody can have something to contribute and practice your conversation. That's the purpose of this class, just to practice speaking English and listening and understanding English. Today, what I want to talk about is learning English as a second language uh, applies to all of you. All of you come from an area where English was not your native language uh, and you're learning English as a second language. So what I'd like to talk about today is what have you found the most helpful in advancing your English? Uh, and uh, specifically, uh, uh, any techniques or any uh, things that you've done uh, to help improve your English. Let's talk about that today. So open for discussion. Who'd like to go first? Well, I could start. Okay, go ahead. I mean, of course, going to school is a plus, you know, to learn anything, right? Yeah. But um, what what uh, gave me a really, you know, uh, really up, believe it or not, was listening to music. I picked some singers who have, you know, a very good pronunciation and uh, slow music, pop music, like uh, Barbara Streisand. I just happen to love her and love the way she speaks and all her lyrics, the lyrics in her songs are beautiful and they have a message. And so they helped me a lot with the making sentences, collocations, and so on. That's okay. just as, uh, one single example. Of course, there are more, but music is one of them. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Thank you. Excellent. All right. Anybody else? In my case, for example, Hello. Uh, reading uh, helps me a lot because. Uh, I start to know the new world, and, and for unknown words, I was looking in the dictionary, um, listening radio through internet uh, helps uh, a lot too. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. Who else? For me, the most important thing uh, is uh, taking classes in Colingo. Uh, helped me a lot to improve my fluency, speaking, and writing, reading. And I speak with some uh, native friends as well in Skype. They helped me a lot uh, with uh, oh, to correct my mistakes when I'm speaking. Okay. And uh, I think to watch videos, mm, and to uh, listen to music as well, and uh, read a book, read a, a book in English, uh, like a novel. That's why I'm doing now. Uh, all right. Very good. Very good. And <laughs> of, uh, uh, all of them. Okay. So a little, you, you've used a combination of all those things to improve. Yes. What, when you mention watching videos, uh, are you talking about movies or music videos? Both. Both of them. Both. All right. All right. <laughs> Very good. And, um, music. I think it's, uh, and, uh, yes, some kind, of some kind of music. And uh, they speak clearly as uh, the other students said. You can learn a lot of vocabulary. 
and okay. as well uh, read a lot, a lot uh, about expression or slangs or idioms. I think it okay. helps a lot. All right. All right. Very good. Very good. Um, one one comment I'll bring uh, into focus from the uh, um, chat group. Uh, person in the chat, Jefferson, says, "Understandable English podcast." Uh, and uh, uh, Jefferson, if you if you can, would you please post a link to the the uh, best podcast uh, site that you found uh, for the rest of the group? Thank you. And Lori said, has helped me communicate with other people, most in, uh, important, unable to read. Uh, all right. Um, OK. All right. Miguel says he likes that uh, comment from uh, Jefferson. Very good. Mm. You know what I did? When I was learning, uh, I read a lot. You know, it, it helped me to like to increase my vocabulary. After that, I, I watched TV in English, movies, I read magazines, uh, I listened to music, as one of my classmates said. And then at the end, I found Kalingo, and it has been like the best tool of all. <laughs> okay. I have impressed right. my English so fast. Very good, very good. And uh, you said you read books a lot. No magazines. Oh, magazines. Okay, all right. Oh, very good. Short stories, you know, fairy tales. Yep. yep. Very good. Very good. I find for people that read um, as a way of increasing their English, I find that the most successful ones are ones that read uh, things they have an interest in. So it's interesting you say magazines because uh, magazines usually are focused on a specific interest. So you you were probably reading magazines that uh, you know had an appeal to your interest. Uh -huh. And I, I think part of that is if you enjoy what you're reading about uh, or interested in what you're reading about, it's uh, easier to to study that. Good. <coughs> about anyone else? Uh, Jefferson mentioned the podcast and uh, one of our previous students had men mentioned a podcast and I think it was I think this was the link to that uh, Jefferson posted a link um, www.nature.com uh, and then there's also one out of Seattle, Washington that I think is www.pronouncier.com All right, somebody asked what the subject was, so I just typed. Uh, what we're talking about today for our first part of our discussion class is what has helped you uh, improve your English skills the most? All right, Miguel, you just mentioned, you just posted something. Would you talk a little bit about your post? Wait a second. It is like kind of website. With okay. different uh, different documentaries, everything you want to you know to learn about, and maybe that can help you know vocabulary and um, the listening too. I think it's good. All right. Hmm. It's good. All right, and you're, 
you're, you're going to, ah, and that's the top documentary topdocumentaryfilms.com okay and Thomas Miguel when you uh, when you when you go on to that uh, documentary and you watch it how do you know the meaning of you said it helps you increase your vocabulary so do you actually pick up words and then look them up and study those words from the documentary yeah. It is like that, you know, I heard the word, I write it down, and then I check in the dictionary, or I look, I look for it in the internet, so, okay. so the next time I heard it, I already know the minute. Alright, very good. Hey, Gary? Gary? Yes. Uh, I posted another link that I... Um, um, I visit him because uh, they have uh, a lot of recordings and you can uh, listen to the recording and then you can answer the question that they posted to them and uh, it helps me a lot with my listening and my comprehension as well. Ah, very good. So, so at the end of the uh, uh, section that you're listening to, it actually has questions for comprehension? Yes, uh, below the recording, okay. they ask you some question about uh, the topic in the recording. All right. And then you can uh, uh, check your answers. Though. And they have uh, different um, topics uh, to listen. And uh, I think it's a, a good website to practice your listening. Okay. All right. And Jefferson posted another post um, that he has a site that he will actually download to his MP3 and uh, player and listen. Um, okay. All right. Very good. Any other uh, things that you've found and used that we haven't mentioned already? All right. Jerry says, um, ah, Jerry, would you talk about this site, please? Tell us about that. Excuse me, uh, this is in uh, my page. This, this is a page where you can speak a lot with a partner, with a friend, but it, it isn't online. But you can learn um, uh, know some verbs, speak a lot. It's a good page. All right. All right, very good. Thank you. Uh, Jefferson asked me a question. He says, hey, Gary, what's your opinion about not to get bored reading an English book, not taking a look at the dictionary all the time? And I, I think that uh, um, there's a, a couple, couple things about reading. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I think it's very important uh, when you're using reading to improve your English skills that your reading material whether it be a book, a magazine, uh, that you have an interest in. Uh, what I try to do with my students uh, uh, that I teach, uh, my private students, I try to find materials that uh, appeal to their interest. Uh, and we use those to read. Uh, and he says also not taking a look at the dictionary all the time. You know, I find this to be a very important point. Um, to keep your interest and to keep the flow of what you're reading, uh, I recommend that as you come to a word you want to look up, write it down, and then get to a stopping point 
uh, and look up the various words that you wanted that you wrote down and then go back to the story or the, the article and look at those words in the context as you're looking them up but I think every time you come to a word if you stop then and look it up uh, it's hard to keep your interest in reading and hard to understand the overall meaning of what you're reading. Um, so I, I like to kind of uh, group my words together that I'm going to look up and, and go back then and look at those in the context uh, that they're used in. Uh, but I'll read a, a complete section, whether that's a chapter or a page or whatever, depends on the amount of time that we have with the student. But I recommend that uh, so that it gives you... Uh, uh, some continuity in your reading uh, and also uh, it, it helps more with your comprehension, your understanding of what you're reading. If you're stopping every third sentence to look a word up, it's hard to stay focused on the meaning of the article or the book. Good question, Jerry. Yes, uh, can I add something? Yeah. Yes, because uh, I have a friend who sent me uh, an English book to read a novel, and he said uh, the same as you told us. Uh, he said, uh, try to read at least uh, twice the first chapter, and uh, only look for the word that you didn't uh, understand, because uh, when you read, you can uh, understand some meanings. And uh, if you look for every word, it's like a word. You don't enjoy a uh, book. Uh, try to to understand the the, uh, let's say that, uh, the context of the book. And and in this way, you you enjoy reading the book. It's, it's because if if you uh, search in the dictionary. Every word is, is, is not a it's, it's not good for you. It's a, a hard job. So I, I try to follow his advice, and now I, I really enjoy reading this book. Yes, 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 Miguel. Um, sorry, guys. I didn't realize someone had muted me. Um, yeah, the uh, it, it definitely helps you when you're uh, uh, reading the context before and after the sentences uh, where you find a word that you're unsure of. I think Miguel posted that it helps him uh, understand the meaning, uh, and it definitely does. It also will help you when you go to the dictionary and there's four or five different definitions for that word. It helps you to know which one to focus on. Very good. Uh, somebody says, Wonderlay says a lot of echo. Is everybody hearing an echo? No. no. Okay. I, I'm not either. Maybe you're, maybe you're typing something. When you're typing. Ah, when you hear when someone's typing. Yes, I, I think okay. uh, I believe that you are typing. <laughs> no, after you, you know when you say the sentence. Yeah, I I'm not hearing the uh, uh, the echo this time. Sometimes I do, but today I don't. Yes. <laughs> so, you know what happens here? What's that? After you finish a sentence, it just starts all over again in the background. 
ah. after you finish a sentence, it just starts again on the, in the background. Okay. Does somebody have two windows open? Make sure that you don't have two windows open. If you have two windows of class, that will cause that. Uh, Gary, I think it's you. <clears throat> Look, look at the, the green bar. I'm speaking. Look. Can you see? Liana? Yeah. I only have one I only have one window open. Yeah, I'm not sure. I see that too, Miguel. I'm not sure why. Mm, we have a ghost here in the glass. <laughs> <laughs> we have a ghost. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, the the uh, couple of you have mentioned about reading, uh, and we talked about making sure it's something that interests you. Uh, and my experience has been, it doesn't matter whether you're reading fiction, nonfiction, uh, or even uh, I have one student that uh, uh, likes to read uh, instructional type information, how to uh, type books. Uh, and uh, uh, as long as it's English uh, and there's, it's at the right level for you, uh, it's, it's uh, a good way to study. I'm curious, some of you have mentioned movies, videos, many of you have mentioned songs, and I, I agree. Um, I live in an area now that many, many people here uh, have learned to speak English by uh, listening to uh, English speaking songs um, and so one of the things I'm curious about when you watch videos or movies or dramas um, at what point of your English level uh, were you able to really start getting some benefit from that was it when you were a beginner intermediate what what level was your English when you started to really see benefit from watching movies or, or videos Medium. I was a high beginner. Have a, a knowledge of some words. And, okay. And, and grammar knowledge as well. So you can understand better. All right. In my case, for example, it's like really, uh, you don't know all the, the words, but you you catch the meaning of the, the situation. Um, uh, it's imp for me, uh, uh, it's impossible to, to catch all the words, but uh, the meaning of the movie is understandable and I, I can understand it. All right. And Jerry asked me to repeat the question, so I typed it. Um, Yep, and Miguel did too. Very good, very good. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, you mentioned that you were able to uh, at at some of you said intermediate, some of you said high beginner. Uh, I, I think you do have to have a certain base uh, of English understanding before you get much benefit from watching movies or videos. Um, but it's interesting. Those of you that are gaining. Uh, you, you've developed a technique uh, of listening skills and uh, it's interesting to hear you talk about it because it's one of the things that in our classroom work that we work on a lot uh, with uh, our students and that's if you only understand 60 percent of the English words but you can build your listening skills so that you can capture the main idea or the key points being discussed you can actually communicate and, and benefit, uh, but uh, uh, you have to have a certain base of understanding of, of the words. But yeah, listening skills very very important. And several of you have talked about that um, in in how you've learned English. Very good. And uh, uh, when we watch a movie, uh, do you suggest us first to watch it uh, with English subtitles? At least twice, twice. Yeah, you know what? If you want to use movies to help improve your English, um, the best way is obviously to study the script 
uh, and, and really uh, dig into the script and, and make it uh, a learning experience and watch the movie before, uh, during, and after. But to watch movies for entertainment, um, yeah, I, I have one concern, and, and um, one of the things that we have uh, seen a lot is the subtitles uh, of some of the movies uh, are not too accurate. And so uh, I just throw a little caution to you. Be careful. Uh, some, of, some of the uh, expressions, especially, uh, the interpretations are not very good. Yes, I used to. So, uh, I used to watch Lost of the series, and I watched. Uh, I saw it uh, twice, the first time without subtitles, subtitles, and in a second instance with subtitles, in English subtitles. Uh, just to know how much I I did understand. Uh, the first time. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the the subtitles can be helpful most of the time, but uh, I find that where they're wrong, uh, majority of the time is is uh, in the expressions. Um, so so we'll have people with. Uh, uh, depending on those subtitles to help them understand a certain expression uh, and uh, uh, it's not always uh, very helpful. In Fatima posts, sometimes movies use slang English and that's that's exactly uh, uh, what I see when it's expressions, idioms, or, or slang. I see a lot of people that uh, a lot of the translations are very incorrect. That brings up an interesting point with slang. Where do you find your interpretations for slang, class? When you have an idiom or a, a slang expression that you want to look up, oftentimes it's not in the dictionary. Where do you find those interpretations? I look it up in uh, <laughs> with Google. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, it's a there is a web page called the urban urban dictionary that has a lot of uh, slang meanings. Okay, very good. So you use Google to find those expressions in. Yes. Ah, uh, Yana says, "How do we improve our vocabulary?" And Yana, I think. For me, uh, taking a list of vocabulary words and memorizing them is great for taking a test. But two days after the test, you forgot 80% of the words and their meanings. And so I don't recommend that method for actually increasing your vocabulary. Um, I, I think one of the best methods for increasing vocabulary is reading something you're interested in, uh, whether it be a magazine uh, or a book, uh, and using uh, those words uh, that you find in the story or the article to, to research those words and discover the meanings. Because when you read the word in a sentence or in a story, uh, and especially when it's something you're interested in, uh, it's easier to remember how that word was used uh, and uh, how to uh, uh, use that word again and, and, and remember the meaning. Ah, sorry, Thomas. Sorry to hear that. Um, let's see. Uh, there was something else. Um, Julio posted a site, ah, www.urbandictionary.com for slang. Julio, talk about that. Do you use that often? Uh, sometimes. Okay. And it usually has them in there? Um, yeah. 
Yes, but I, I don't understand the slang. I try to find it in this website. Okay. All right. You use the same website, Liliana? Yes. I'll ah. Very good. Very good. Um, yeah. Very, very good. And one of uh, and Fatima says, "What about writing an essay?" Um, I, I think that writing can be very helpful. Um, uh, I, I think that that writing is uh, it's very important. To write at your level, and so if your level is a beginner, don't try to write using compound sentences and very complex structure. Just write at your level. Uh, and uh, uh, I, 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 uh, I think that when you um, are, are writing uh, an essay, for example, uh, you'll, if you're writing about a specific subject or topic, again, something you're interested in helps. Uh, and then also, uh, as you're writing, uh, you may encounter some words that you need to look up or research uh, uh, how to use certain grammar uh, and uh, that can be very helpful as well. Um, I think that someone said it earlier, they mentioned several things they've been doing uh, and uh, uh, a combination of those things work a lot. One of the things um, that I have had good success with with my students, I teach um, at an academy and we have students that will come here for sometimes three months at a time and, and they take English lessons every day uh, and uh, uh, writing a daily journal actually has helped them quite a bit uh, and every day they will write uh, about their day what they did what they learned and just being forced to take their thoughts and put them into English words um, helps a lot. Fatima says, I think, describe daily activity. Yes, uh, that's exactly what they do in their journal. And that's been a really big help to them. Um, Gary, yes. I'm sorry for interrupting. Uh, no, you're fine. Uh, uh, how do I do uh, to avoid uh, using fillers when, when I'm speaking? Yeah, I'm sorry, say that one more time, Liliana. Yes, how do I do to avoid... Uh, using fillers? Ah, fillers. Well, I, I think I think that uh, uh, when you're speaking, fillers become an unconscious activity. People will say, uh, mm, yeah, uh, they'll use different fillers, yeah. And, and what you have to do is make it conscious. So you won't even notice yourself uh, doing it and you have to train yourself to notice it and just stop every time you start to use a filler stop uh, and uh, but be raising your consciousness of it is I think the only way to really stop that habit because it is a habit uh, and as we've talked about in pronunciation class it takes 30 days to break a, a habit and Jane says how teacher uh, Jane tell me what you're asking me how um, uh, but the uh, uh, another thing I wanted to comment about um, Yana says I think the TOEFL and IELTS uh, exams if you're English there are some TOEFL and IELTS manuals uh, that are for uh, intermediate level um, and if you're truly at an intermediate level those manuals can be very good and she mentions the test uh, and yes uh, you can take the test and you can uh, uh, actually uh, uh, not only assess your skills know where your skills are at but you can also use it as a growing experience uh, and and uh, improving your English. Uh, so so those manuals can be very helpful. I will warn you though, 
In most IELTS and most TOEFL manuals, the subjects that they have for listening and speaking are usually very academic, and that's on purpose. They don't want to use subjects you already have a familiarity with because they want you to uh, work on speaking or listening skills about something that the only knowledge you have of it is what you got from that article or what you got from that clip that you listened to. Uh, and so uh, uh, those can be very helpful, but the, the material can be kind of dry. Um, and, and Jane just clarified herself. Uh, she says, how do you make it conscious? It's very difficult, and I think one way to become more conscious of it um, is to uh, actually record yourself. And you have to almost forget you're recording yourself just in a conversation, record yourself, and go back and listen and see how often you use fillers and try to become conscious of when you use fillers. Sometimes it's when you're gathering your thoughts. Sometimes it's between sentences. Sometimes it's when you're coming to a word that you're unsure how to say. You'll throw a filler in. So, uh, Jane, the best way is by recording and starting to become conscious of clues when fillers are going to come. Then you can get prepared to stop them and be conscious before they hit. Uh, for um, example, we can use other words instead of filler, like, for example, in other words or in fact, instead yeah. of saying, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I have a young Chinese student, and uh, he's really good at that. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, when he speaks, if he's thinking about something, uh, he had a habit of always saying, uh, and now he's changed that to, let me think. Ah, uh, let me think, yes. Yeah, so he'll, when I can hear him about to use a filler, because he is, he's, that's just what he's doing, he's thinking, he'll say, ah, let me think. Or well, well, while you are thinking. Uh, yeah, when, when he's speaking and he's coming to a part where he needs to gather his thoughts or search for the right English word, uh, he, will, uh, he will begin to say, let me think. Mm -hmm. uh, and rather, because he did have a bad habit of going, uh... Mm -hmm. So he's broke that by, by uh, implementing that. So yeah, those are that's a great suggestion, Liliana. Uh, Miguel, your sentence, no one will ever make me a part of your love. Um, I, it, in order for me to, to uh, know if it's correct, I need to know what you mean by that. Can you tell me? Um, that I, that I, will, I, will, uh, I won't ever let someone to destroy our relationship. Okay. That's what I meant. All right. All right. So what we would say, we would change it a little bit. Um, rather than saying no one will ever make me a part, um, we, we want to say uh, no one will ever take me away, away or no one will ever separate me from your love. Uh, a part is okay, but we would not use make uh, for the meaning that you're looking for. Now, having said that, if we're talking about a sentence of a song or a poem, this type of a structure would be acceptable because uh, sometimes songs uh, and poems will word things for more for the rhythm of the song or the or the poem than they do proper grammar. Yes, they don't take care about uh, grammar. Sentences. Yep, yep, you're exactly right. Uh, Jerry asked a very good question, and he says, "How do you think in English?" And thinking in English is the final uh, hurdle. Uh, and and let me explain what I mean by that. Most of you, uh, and I'm, I am too learning uh, another language right now, and so I sometimes can use that experience to help me relate to you when you're learning English. Uh, but most of us, when we're learning a second language, when we hear something spoken in that second language, we translate it to our native language in our head, 
then we think of our response in our native language and then we translate that to speak it back in the second language. So for those of you that English is your second language, you're probably doing that. And again, consciously or unconsciously. Uh, but when someone says, says something to you, you always convert that to your native language and then you think in your native language and then convert that to English. If you can get past that, and Jerry asked the question how, I really don't know the answer to that. But what I do know is it's the final hurdle for my students when they become fluent in English. They tell me, teacher, I'm no longer thinking in Korean or I'm no longer thinking in Chinese. Uh, when I heard that statement, I thought about it in English. Uh, and uh, one of my students, about at the same time, that she started to st stop translating in her mind, she told me she started to have some dreams that were in English also. So that was kind of a clue for her that she'd cross that line. Uh, but yes, if you can get to that point, uh, it's a huge advantage. Yeah, and Judith says, I'm a beginner. There are classes for beginners. Yes. Uh, if on the Colingo site they'll be labeled beginner, uh, intermediate, or advanced, um, and and this class we're trying to keep at a beginner level. It's difficult at times to keep things at a level where everybody is at, so we end up with kind of a mix sometimes. Um, Fatima uh, makes a, co a great comment, and she says that. Um, we uh, usually translate from my native into English uh, and then later she says it just needs experience and you're right exposure and experience are the key uh, and uh, speaking in English as much as you can uh, I encourage all of you to try to get your friends uh, to join in and what I mean by that is uh, create some activities and have some fun with it and just say oh, this is going to be our English night out so maybe you're going to the beach, maybe you're going bowling, or some activity that you're going to enjoy with your friends. Uh, if they too are trying to improve their English, make it an English outing. So make a rule where everybody has to communicate in English that day. And just from being forced to put your everyday activities into English and only communicate in English, you'll find that you'll be helping each other search for the right words or explain something uh, and it can be a lot of fun you just have to be careful because the natural tendencies is to break the rule go back to your native language uh, but if you can use English in your leisure activities even if it's just not every time but occasionally have an English night or an English activity uh, it is very helpful yeah Jane says immersion yeah <laughs> you're exactly right yeah, you're exactly right. Yes, I yeah, and speaker. Mm -hmm. say, say that again, Liliana. Uh, like uh, Fatima type it in the chat. Uh, just keep talking with the native speaker. I think it's, uh, it's the best way to use your uh, speaking. And, uh, especially when the person don't speak any word in your native language, so you force yourself to speak in English and to be understand. understand yep, English. I agree. If you can, if you can have access to a native speaker, it's great. Uh, if not, uh, you know, take advantage of the people around you that speak well in English. Fatima makes that comment as well. And yeah, just practice exposure. Very, very important. Um, conversation uh, is very beneficial after. You're, you're past that very entry beginner level. When you're at the very entry beginner level, uh, conversation can be quite frustrating. Um, as I mentioned, I'm trying to learn uh, Visayan, and uh, uh, it is uh, very difficult for me to join in a conversation. Uh, and so I'm, I'm such at a, a beginning level that uh, Right now, I'm just studying expressions and words and uh, trying to privately pick up as much as I can. 
Yeah, and Fatima says, I think Colingo is a site. Colingo is a great site, obviously, all native speakers. The other thing that I think helped, <coughs> excuse me, the other thing that I think helps separate Colingo a little bit is that it's specifically all American native speakers. Um, it, it's difficult. Uh, when you're in an environment where you have people speaking both American English and British English, uh, it's difficult to uh, uh, grasp as quickly, I think. Um, yeah, and Mo says a uh, great comment, and uh, many, many young people uh, like video games, and today the video games are fairly interactive, uh, and um, uh, when you play online, uh, you can play a lot of video games where the other players will be native speakers and you can talk to them online as you're playing. Good good comment, Mo. You have the uh, Skype too, uh, where you can find many groups and people that want to learn English or Spanish. And there you can find. Uh, just made a partner to, to discuss in, in a foreign language. Yeah, very, very good comment. You're absolutely right, uh, uh, Julio. It's, it's uh, uh, on many of the Skype sites you can find English study groups. And it's a one on one. Judith, Ju Judith says, I love Colingo, but I don't understand anything. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it takes a lot of time and experience. And, and Judith, that's why I made the comment, when you're at a very beginner level, just engaging in conversation can be difficult, but it does get easier. And you've got some classmates here telling you to keep watching for a while, uh, you'll improve. Yeah, and uh, Wonderlay has a, a good comment. There's good English schools all over the world. Uh, there are um, also uh, some opportunities, kind of depending on uh, uh, what you're doing in your life and what your purpose for learning English is. But there are certain jobs that also um, can help expose you to more English. Uh, and Where I've had you, several. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from America. Uh, I most recently lived in Alaska, and I'm currently living in the Philippines. Uh, are you living in the Philippines now? Right now? Yes. Yes. And uh, but you are from Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up in the Midwest, but spent the last part of my career in Alaska. I lived in Fairbanks, Alaska. Because your English is uh, very clear. American. To me. No, it's not English, American. Ah, thank you. Yeah, interesting. Uh, and you bring up a great point, Julio. Uh, when you talk to people from the United States, uh, their dialect or their accent will depend on where they grew up or where they spent most of their time. Um, and for me, I grew up in the Midwest uh, and so uh, I don't have a strong accent you know like somebody from the East Coast or the South, south part of the United States or the far north part of the United States you'll, you'll hear some very strong accents um, but one of the things that I've learned I've been teaching English now as a second language I took a uh, program called TESOL and uh, got my certificate in TESOL uh, which is teach English to students of other languages uh, and I've been teaching English now for almost two years uh, to students of other languages both in person and online uh, and I teach in an academy here in the Philippines uh, as well as teaching online and that has helped me be more conscious of my speaking uh, because prior to teaching I spoke much faster so now I try to slow down and I try to pronounce pronounce my words much more clearly uh, because I know people are listening and trying to learn. 
but yeah, it's thank you. Americans, uh, in general, no, I can say all, but most of them speak very fast and they yeah. try the word, so it's uh, a little hard to us to understand. Everything. Yes, yeah, you're exactly right. In fact, uh, as you become more fluent, um, you'll start to do some of those things too. Um, you know, we drop uh, a lot of sounds off, and we also, and you, you said it very well, Liliana, we join sounds together. And contractions. Yep. 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 I agree. I agree. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, it's, it's difficult, I think, uh, to always find a single source that, that helps you. Uh, but one of the reasons I wanted to bring this topic up for discussion today, um, I continue to be amazed. Many of you, uh, as students, uh, when you tell me how long you've been studying English, I'm impressed. Your English skills have come along very well for no longer than you've been studying or, or uh, practicing. And so uh, I'm always intrigued to find out how did you get where you are so quickly. Um, I work with some students that have been studying for 10 years and still struggle a lot to speak. Um, and I think the common denominator is exposure. Most of those students live in an area where they don't have much exposure. Um, and other than when they're studying, they don't uh, have an opportunity to be immersed in English. I think, uh, for example, in my case, uh, I think the way that I've been taught, because uh, uh, in school they um, reinforce always our grammar knowledge, but uh, they don't. Uh, oh, we don't know how to be fluent. I think yeah. I have uh, a lack of fluency. They always uh, say you have to study the grammar structures, but they don't focus on your fluency. Yeah. I, I, it's interesting I, I, you bring that up because I have that discussion on a regular basis uh, with some of my students. And they always uh, focus so much on grammar and the structure of the sentence that they want to speak, it gets in the way of their speaking. And so I tell them, you know, let's just practice speaking right now. Forget about grammar. We'll focus on that later. And they are so focused on how they've learned grammar, it's hard for them to do that. And I, I tell them, listen, uh, if I'm talking to a Korean student, I'll say, when you learn to speak Korean as a child, did you learn grammar first or did you learn to speak first? And, of course, the answer is, well, I learned to speak. Uh, and that's exactly my point. You can have decent conversation skills without having uh, perfect grammar skills. Uh, the, the real key is they're, they're two totally different things. Uh, you obviously need to have some basis in grammar, uh, but when we're focusing on conversational English and speaking, uh, sometimes too much focus on grammar can be a problem or can get in the way. Yeah, because sometimes, sometimes I stuck myself if I'm thinking all the time in grammar when I'm speaking. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, very common issue. Uh, and uh, uh, I teach uh, here in the Philippines, the academies have a lot of people come from different parts of Asia. So uh, we'll have a lot of Koreans, we'll have a lot of uh, um, Japanese, a lot of Chinese. Uh, a lot of Russians that come to the Philippines to study English and uh, most of them have have the same mistake that you just mentioned Liliana they've been so focused on learning grammar that uh, it actually causes them a little bit of hesitation when they're trying to speak yeah Fatima says a baby uh, learns speaking first that's exactly right um, that's exactly right, and uh, if you can if you can remember that, uh, and just try to engage in conversation and and uh, listen to the uh, English language, uh, and try to speak uh, in in a uh, a way where you're responding to what you understand, 
uh, it's it's much more likely that you'll become a better speaker than if you just study in a book and look at grammar and how to structure sentences before you try to speak them. I agree. I let the conversation flow. I'm sorry, say that again. I let the conversation flow. Yeah, 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 exactly. Let the conversation flow. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And the majority of there are a lot of uh, noise of dishes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I just got a glass of water and set it down really ne right next to the laptop. Sorry. Uh, no, no problem. Yeah, my my uh, laptop's sitting on a granite countertop, and so it makes a very loud clank. <laughs> how, how about the echo? Are you guys still getting the echo when I speak? No, no, no. I don't. no. no. All right, good. Good. Yeah, uh, Miguel, you said thanks for the class. Absolutely. Thank all of you. And as I tell all my students uh, for these classes, your participation, 